V and its modern descendant Vim are powerful text editors which are notoriously difficult for beginners to get stuck even finding the exit to. Today, we'll show you some powerful things you can do with Vim on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While most new hackers prefer the simplicity of Nano because it's super easy to throw around and particularly exit, it's also not as powerful as Vim or some other built-in text editors might be. Now you might not find Nano on every system, and in general it's good to know all the various tools that are available. And V or Vim in various forms should be available on most different systems you'll find, including Linux-based operating systems uh, like remote servers. Now, in general, V and Vim are also super configurable and make a much better IDE for throwing around some code at a moment's notice than Nano might, provided you know how to do things like exit. Now, for a beginner, jumping in and finding out that the one command that exits out of pretty much every other program doesn't work can be really frustrating, which is probably what led to the really popular comment thread on our top 10 things to do after installing Kali, uh, Kali Linux video, which uh, is a bunch of people joking about how hard it is to exit Vim. Now, some people recommend uh, uninstalling Vim or destroying your computer, but we're going to re recommend a couple more productive things you can do with Vim that are useful and productive on a Linux system. Now, in order to do this, you'll just need to have a computer that has V or Vim. So you can open a terminal window and just type V, and in most cases, it will system link to the most modern implementation. Once you do that, we should be ready to begin. Vim can be a pretty overwhelming subject to dive too deep on, so while there's a number of potential and powerful applications, which you can explore on websites like vim.org, we're going to stick to some basics so you can use it productively when you're hacking or in a server and you find that it's the only text editor available, or if you just want to graduate from Nano and not just to stick to things that are easy and simple and maybe take more than um, maybe five minutes to set up. So here you can see some kid in Uganda has figured out how to drill through walls with Vim, but if you want to stick to some more basic stuff, you can refer to this wonderful tutorial by Barrow that goes through a lot of the basics that we'll be kind of referencing in order to go through our guide today. Now, you can also go through our uh, best Vim tips on uh, the vim.wikipedia.com, and you'll find a lot of really interesting tips here that'll let you learn more about how to use it if you're interested in using some of the more advanced features. And you can see here, they get really, really advanced. So because it's such a common tool and so many administrators use it, there's really been a lot built out. And I highly recommend that you check these out if you become interested in using Vim as a text editor, a text editor that's a little bit more configurable and widespread. So to get started, we can jump into a terminal window. And what we'll do is go ahead and type pwd to see if we are in our home directory. Now, if I was in, a wrong, in the wrong directory, I wouldn't want to go ahead and do this next step because if I put a configuration file um, not in my home directory, then when Vim starts, it won't know where to look in order to configure itself. So first we can go ahead and if we're not already in our home directory, we can type cd and that will take us to our home directory. And again, I can type pwd and I should get the same result. So now in order to start our Vim configuration file, we can type Vim and then the name of the file we want to create, which is vimrc. So, and with a period in front of it. So when we run this, you can see that I actually already have this set up, but I can't just go ahead and start typing because there's a difference between the two different modes in Vim. Now this is usually where beginners might panic and realize that, oh my God, this isn't working like Nano. I can't just go ahead and jump in. I can't even exit uh, because the normal things don't work. So first you need to understand there's a difference between um, the mode that allows you to input text and then there's a difference between command mode. So if you wanna just go ahead and jump in, you can type I for input or A, which will jump in uh, one character deep. So I can type A here just to show you. And you can see we're one character into the input. And then we can go ahead and move around and start typing stuff. So uh, here we can see we have a couple configurations uh, options set. And this is kind of cool because we can actually see the configuration options acting on itself since I've already set this up. 
Now you should set your configuration options to match this. So go ahead and type these configuration uh, settings in. In this case, we're turning the syntax on, which accounts for this coloring. And that lets us use this to code because it'll give us, give us some basic coding syntax. For example, uh, commenting things out or highlighting different lines to allow us to see our code more clearly and identify where we might have missed something or there might be errors. Next, we'll give a wrapping margin of eight. Um, so that basically gives us a buffer so that our, our text doesn't spill all the way to the edge of the terminal window and makes things a lot easier to read. Then we can go ahead and uh, add set number to add this line numbering. And that gives us a better indication of how much uh, code is in a particular file and keep an eye on how many lines it is that we're writing. Now comes the part that uh, can get a little scary for a beginner. What if we want to exit? So pressing Control C doesn't do anything. Uh, instead, we can go back into command mode by pressing Escape. So I'm gonna attempt to do that now because I'm on a MacBook and with this virtual control, it's very helpfully trying to ask me to exit the recording. So let's see if I can do this. Hey, it's still working. Okay, cool. So we'll escape. And now if I want to write a command to basically quit, I can write colon, and then you can see we're inputting at the very bottom, and WQ. So that is basically, basically saying write quit, and there we go. We have successfully exited Vim and uh, fulfilled the core promise of this tutorial. So if we want to go back into this file, we can open it again, and actually I'm gonna practice, press escape, colon. We can also type WQ exclamation point. And what this means is we're basically overriding if we get an error or it says originally that there's some sort of issue. Sometimes this will happen if we uh, are overriding something and it wants to kind of warn us and, and say that, hey, in order to overwrite this file or save these changes on an existing file, I want you to confirm first. So uh, that is in a nutshell how to actually exit them. But let's go a little bit deeper and open a test file and see what we can really do with this. So let's type them test.txt. Whoa, and here we can see something that Vim has done for us. We can see that because we exited this out without actually uh, exiting the file completely in Vim or we didn't write it, it's helpfully attempting to recover it. So if you ever get disconnected from a Vim session, this is kind of handy to see. It'll actually attempt to save it for you, uh, which is really handy and nice. So in this case, I'm going to attempt to recover it and recovery is completed. So uh, we'll go ahead and see that, yep, here we go. We've actually reverted the changes in this file that I did, but that's okay, because I should still have what I want to add in this buffer so we can start to work with it. Now here, we've just jumped in, but I haven't gone into input mode yet, so I'll type I, and now we're in insert mode, and I can go ahead and put in some additional text for us to kind of look at what we can do. Now here's where we can start to navigate through text when we're in both, uh, well, when we want to be in command mode. So if I uh, type escape, so we're in command mode again, I can use uh, E to go to the end of a word, which you can see here. I can use W to go to the beginning of words. I can use a couple other things like uh, the dollar sign to go to the end of the line. And then I can use the uh, zero to go to the beginning of a line. So finally, if we want to go to the absolute end of a file, we can do a capital G and that'll jump us there. And if we want to go to the start, we can just type GG. Now this is a lot faster than Nano in most regards because we can kind of jump through the file pretty quickly. And if we want to uh, maybe modify some code we found or change some configuration options, this means we can really be specific. And if we know that we want to go to you know, the second to last line, we can kind of jump through it in the file and, and be a little bit more effective on longer files than we can be in a more basic text editor. But what if we want to actually search through a file and identify something by a specific word? Well, while we're in command mode, what we can do is type a uh, slash here and then type in what we want to find. So let's say we want to find the word hunt. So when we type that, we see it takes us exactly to the word hunt within this poem. And that means that we can go through and, oh, we can see also if we want to go to the next, we can press N and that'll take us to the next result. So there's only one in this document, but uh, that's okay because we have just a test example. And we can also then go ahead and type 
a percentage sign and then s and what we're going to do is a string replace so first we'll find something so let's say we want to replace the word life so i'll match that and we want to replace it with death uh, just because we want to flip it so let's go ahead and also type c which will basically ask us to confirm each instance which means that we won't automatically overwrite everything. If we catch something that's maybe not what we intended, we'll be able to catch it here. So when we run it, we can see, oops, that pattern's not found. Maybe I should have picked a better example. Um, oh, maybe it was just the string. Let's see. So if I try this again. Oh, I know why. All right, so again, you have to do the colon first and then all this. There we go. So now you can see that if you do colon percentage sign S and then slash the word that you're looking for and then slash the word that you want to replace, you can skip through your code and automatically replace stuff. And if you want to go ahead and do the same thing and add another slash with the letter C, that'll allow you to go through and make sure that you don't overwrite something you don't want to. Now, the last thing that we'll take a look at is some fancier ways we can exit or even skip around and look for something while we're inside our, uh, our Vim uh, text editor. So let's say that we wanna go into another file and copy something and paste it into this. Well, we don't need to exit out of this or even open another terminal window, which is pretty cool. Instead, we can type colon and then a exclamation point and then bash, which will open up a shell and we can do whatever we want here. So we can ls and see what's in uh, our folder. And then let's say we want to open uh, secret.txt. So cat secret.txt. And then we can copy something here. And we can then go ahead and copy this text into our existing file. Now, how do we get back? Well, I was confused at first too. We just type exit or, and we're right back in our window. So I type I for insert, go down to the bottom and I can paste here. And there we go. So now let's write our new file. We'll escape again to go into command mode. And then we'll just type colon W for write. There we go, and that's it. We've written this, and if we want to, colon Q for quit, we have successfully written our file in Vim, and it was not painful at all. So you can go ahead and use this both for the find and replace feature to easily throw in a text file, and uh, maybe modify a small portion of code to adapt it for a new IP address or something else that you want to modify. You can even do something more uh, aggressive, like jump into a bunch of files and aggregate them all within the same text editor. The kind of neat thing about Vim is that you don't have to uh, break out a bunch of other windows and try to do all those things separately. Instead, you can do all, all of them from within a bash window while you're inside Vim. And as soon as you quit it, you'll be right back inside the text editor that you're working on. Now, these tricks are definitely worth learning because you're likely to find yourself in an environment in which V or Vim are the only acceptable or even available text editors. So their power and versatility really begins to shine when they're the only option you have. As you can see, it doesn't take much to master the difference between command and insert mode on Vim. And it's pretty easy to understand why it might be more powerful or easy to use than Nano once you get an understanding of how to use it. Now for doing things like find and replace or modifying code on the fly, it's super useful to be able to open something in another uh, bash shell, find it, copy something, and bring it back into something you're working on, and use some of the other handy features included in Vim to make it easier either writing some code, modifying some code, or changing things on the fly. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, make sure to send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you next time.